Yo, what's up guys, Felix from Giant Lifestyle. In this video, I'm gonna be sitting down with Eddie. Eddie is a wholesaler in the DMV, Maryland, DC, and Virginia area. He's absolutely crushing it. And I see a lot of people on my channel wanna know about wholesaling, how to do it, and how to get involved with real estate. So I figured why not to bring somebody who's really doing it and really seeing success onto the channel so they could tell you about what they're doing and how they're succeeding and how they can help you succeed as well. So without further ado, welcome Eddie to the channel. Tell everybody a little bit about yourself, who you are, where you're from, and what exactly do you do? Sure, sure, yeah, my name is Eddie Colson, as Felix um, so eloquently just introduced me. I live in uh, specifically Baltimore, Maryland. I do deals in DC, Maryland, as well as Virginia. I've been doing deals for about 10 years now, and uh, I'm just excited and thrilled to be uh, a guest on your, on your show, man. Yeah, thank you, man, for joining me on the channel. And I think it's kind of crazy because like we were saying before, we actually, um, earlier in the day, you know, we kind of been friends on Facebook for what seems like, I don't know, five, six, seven years. And, you know, we kind of seen each other grow, even though we never directly did business together. You know, I seen you from, I think you had like a truck, if I don't remember, where you had the mm -hmm. Eddie or Colson buys houses. And, you know, I know from then to now, you probably have even 10 extra success. So congrats to you and i'm curious like you know since um i guess we first became facebook friends how has everything from then to now how has everything been going for you things been going great man you know um i've definitely scaled my business since then um you know there was a time when i was focusing on volume as many deals as possible um there was a time when i was focused on size the biggest deal i could possibly make per deal um and now you know, it started to work as a beautiful marriage where I'm getting volume as well as really large um, uh, assignment deals. So, yeah, man, it's, it's, it's definitely be a, been a beautiful process. And, you know, I'm looking forward to seeing what else I can do, man. What would you say? How many you, you, you still do wholesaling and you also do uh, rental properties, right? Or you're a landlord? Correct. Yep. And how many um, just for size and scale for people to understand how many wholesale deals would you say you do a month? And then how many rental units do you actually have? So we do um, low end, maybe two, two de um, wholesale deals every month um, on the high end, sometimes eight, um, sometimes 10. Um, it really depends um, on that particular month. Um, I own 12 rental properties right now. I, I bought all of them, um, creative financing, basically a payment over time arrangement um, without using any cash or credit. And um, yeah, I, I owe all of my success uh, to wholesaling. Wholesaling has taught me a lot of things um, about real estate from how to analyze the deal, um, what investors are looking for. And that made me a better investor once I started buying properties myself. So definitely a good strategy to earn while you learn for sure. Yeah. Wholesaling, you know, can be, you know, it, I think it's kind of crazy because, you know, and I, um, you know, I watched another interview with you where you kind of got into real estate based off the rich dad, poor dad, Robert Kiyosaki brand which you know completely changed my life as well and wholesaling can be that thing when you first hear about it you're like yo this is the most insane most lucrative uh business model possible but people kind of underestimate how hard it really can be but the reward once you kind of get past that newbie stage and you do your first deal um you know and actually see see it all the way through it can be really rewarding i'm sure you've closed deals you know i know a guy in my area who did a deal for like I think 60,000, even though that's kind of on the high side, you know, closing a deal for you know, a wholesale deal for 10, 20, 30,000 is not something that's unlikely. And even though usually you're probably going to do deals between five and 10, um, you know, I'm curious what, if, if you're able to say, what is the biggest deal you ever done as far as a wholesale deal? The, the biggest deal I've done is a hundred grand. And um, I would say for sure that a lot of times it's your mindset that makes you think that a deal is supposed to be five to 10 grand. Like that's how I used to think it, think about it. But um, we really determine that, you know, there is no, there's no like um, set assignment fee that the common thing, I mean, we think that's how it is in our mindset, but that's really just a mindset thing. That's what I've realized as I've gotten uh, more mature into this business for sure. Um, if you don't mind me t telling the little story about the rival okay. kids. Go ahead. Let's, yeah. let's, let's hear it. Yeah, I, I got started in real estate, man, you know, really out of desperation because I got kicked out of my parents' house. My stepfather and I, we had this big blow up argument about cleaning my room. 
And, um, and I decided that I wanted to be macho and tough. And I told him no, and he kicked me out. So um, when I, when I, once I got kicked out, I had to find places to stay. I had a lot of uh, friends um, that let me stay on their couches for a while, but I didn't want to you know, take advantage. So my, my uh, boxer trainer at the time, he let me stay at um, a house that was basically on the same uh, parcel as the, uh, as, the box, as, the, um, as the gym, boxing gym. So while I was there, um, I took some books that my mom had. My mom was very entrepreneurial. She had assistant livings and things like that. And I took one of the books and one of the books was Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Um, so when, when, when I was reading that book, she had highlights everywhere, all over. And um, really bad highlighter, you know, so it's kind of hard to read it. But I got just so ingrained into it. And, you know, I'm just graduating high school. Um, I kind of uh, grew, grew into hating uh, reading because of school, because of the things that they made us read. But that was one of the first books that I really just enjoyed. Um, was it the, was it the, I didn't mean to cut you off, was it the original, the, what, rich people teach their kids that the poor middle class don't? No, no, I didn't read, I read that um, later. I read, wait, was that the book? I read the one about the cash flow quadrant and investing in your business. So it was more so investing in your business as opposed to like, because, you know, Robert Kiyosaki is kind of meant for real estate a little bit. It wasn't really a real estate book, but he talked a lot about how real estate can be very, very good and just really breaking down the cash flow quadrants. That was a and book it, you ever read, right? I, I remember that book. The, that was like, and I hated reading at the time. And I was like, this is the best book I've ever read. It was so crazy. Exactly. I don't know what he put some type of voodoo magic on that book. <laughs> Yeah, it was definitely inspired so many people. A lot of people owe a lot of their their inspiration of getting into this business from that book for sure. So yeah, you know, um, I, I ended up reading that book. Um, I was I was driving, um, coming back from work, this dead end job that I had um, that I absolutely hated. I thought I wanted to be a pharmacist. I was working at a giant pharmacy at the time, and uh, I heard on the radio that Robert Kiyosaki was coming to Baltimore, Maryland, to talk about certain things. So I was like, oh, I'm going to that. It was free. I went there. From there, they sold us on a $300 uh, uh, weekend seminar thing that talked about all about uh, real estate investing and things like that. I was really focused on the idea of wholesaling because that's what got me to, um, to really spend the $300 to go over the weekend. But it was more of an overall um, uh, conversation about real estate. They talked about it so fast. They went through all these different strategies, never gave us any contract, anything concrete. And at the end, they asked us for $20,000 and said, hey, if you don't come with us and, be, and we be your mentors, definitely go out there and get other mentors. Mm -hmm. Now, at the time, I was working at Giant Pharmacy. Giant Pharmacy is based on seniority. So if you're new there, you get as least amount of hours as possible. I was going there to get experience about being a pharmacist. Um, so I was making 7,500 a year on my tax returns from what it said. I was literally making $7,500 a year. Wow. And um, so I didn't have, I, like, I didn't have 20 grand. I had to borrow the $300 from my girlfriend at the time to go to that, that, to that weekend seminar. I had, I didn't have 20 grand. Yeah. And there was people that was writing out checks, um, you know, uh, borrowing money from, from everybody that they need to, um, because that's what they encouraged us to do. You want it bad as you want to breathe type of mentality. And I just didn't have it. So I took their advice and I looked for a mentor elsewhere. They gave us a game plan. I was very appreciative that they gave us a game plan on how to find a mentor if, we're, if they're not the good fit. And they said, go to different real estate meetup groups, look up real estate investing um, groups on meetup.com and Facebook groups, and then look for a mentor. And that's exactly what I did. Um, I hope I'm not chopping up, brother. Can you hear me? Oh, you're great. You're great. Everything is great so far. All right, cool. So I went there. I ended up seeing somebody that actually uh, went to my high school and uh, came back to the school and would talk a lot about like black culture and stuff like that. So I saw him at the meetup group and I was like, bro, I need to learn about this wholesaling thing. Um, I heard you can invest without using any cash or credit. Uh, that, that fits. I fit that description. I don't have any credit and I don't have any cash and I would like to make some. So he pointed me in the direction of different mentors that that was their specific niche. Um, I went to uh, one of those mentors, I mean, him very, clicked very well. And I offered him, I offered to work at his, at his, uh, at his office for free for, for six months. We wrote up a contract for six months. 
and I just worked for free. I made calls for free. I just, I did whatever he asked me to do and I didn't ask for a dime in return. And it was one of the best educations that I ever gotten. At the end of the, it was, it, we ended up going to like eight months. And at the end of the eight months, he asked me that I want to stay on and be, be his acquisition manager or did I want to go out and do my own thing? Um, being young and wanting to be the man, I said, you know what? I want to go out and do my own thing. It took me six months. Like you said, it took me six months to close my first deal. I think it had a lot to do with my mindset. And, uh, and then ever since I closed my first deal, it, it, it started coming in threes. I started closing three deals a month. Um, and, I, and, you know, of course, I had dry spells and things like that. But I've been going growing ever since. That's an awesome story, man. That's, that's incredible. What, what do you think? Do you ever think about if you would have stayed working with him and maybe partnering with him? Or are you glad with the decision that you made as far as, you know, I think everything happens for a reason. But do you ever think about that? Yeah, for sure. I mean, um, I, I definitely like to have the idea of no regrets and just to keep going. And um, every, like you said, everything happens for a reason. Um, but I, I do believe that in this business, this is one of the only businesses where you can work with other people and make a ton of money. And, it's, and it works in your favor if you work with, with other people. Um, like if I have, like, for instance, if I have a car dealership, I'm not going to go across the street to, to the car dealership across the street and say, hey, let's mastermind on how we can make more car sales or whatever, because yeah. that's like a conflict of interest. Yeah. But in real estate, investing, wholesaling, um, we can work together. Like you can find a deal, I can find a buyer, we can work on deals together. Um, and it works better that way. I'm sure you, you would yeah, agree. There's a million ways to skin a cat in real estate. There's so many different ways and how you can make money and it's, 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 it's endless. So you got your first deal in six months. How much was it for? I believe it was five grand. So I'll tell you the story behind that. So I was, um, took me over. I was hustling, bro. I was hustling. I was doing everything they told me to do. Cold calling. Um, I was sending out a lot of letters back in the day. We would sell on a lot of letters and that's how a lot of people got their deals. Um, and I really think people did that cause they were scared to cold call. But, um, I was doing a lot of letters back then and um, I would get people to, to answer and things like that. Um, but I wasn't getting any traction. I think I was just nervous, just didn't know what to say, but I was still calling people. I was taking the action. And um, one day I was driving somewhere. I think I was putting out banner signs, bro. I, I think I was working, but the deal didn't come from any of the stuff that I actually did. I went to a gas station and I saw this, this, uh, this sticker, this We Buy Houses sticker, kind of like a bandit sign, but it was a sticker and it was on one of the, uh, the gas pumps at the gas station. So I said, I'm gonna call this guy. This, that's a really clever marketing. I like that, I'm gonna call this guy, see if we can do something. I called him and he ended up having a property that he, that he needed help selling. Um, I had built a relationship with this buyer, with this other buyer, and they've been kind of coaching me at, the, at that time. They were kind of like my, I wouldn't say they were my mentors, but they will always give me game, right? I didn't, I wasn't like teaching them. Um, they wasn't like teaching me or anything like that. And we didn't have no type of contract or anything like that, but I will reach out to them and say, Hey, I got this deal. I got that deal. And every single time I reached out to them and say, Eddie is too high. Um, Eddie, this needs more work or whatever. Like, you know, they would educate me. So, so I would, uh, I would go to them every single time and just get game, keep getting game, keep getting game. Met this guy at the, um, called him, um, from that sticker on the gas station. He had this property he needed help with. I sent it to my buyers. Um, and they said, Hey, this is a great area. Like, I think we're a little, you know, off on numbers. It's a little tight on numbers, but what I'm going to do is I can come to look at the property for you. And maybe if we need to renegotiate with the seller, we'll renegotiate with the seller. Bro, the buyer came in uh, with, with my JV partner um, and li literally renegotiated the entire contract with the seller, but still gave us our fee. So we made $5,000 on that, um, $2,500 each. If I'm not mistaken, it, I believe it was $5,000. And, um, and they did everything. So what I did from that was that what that showed me, it showed me exactly how to talk to sellers, what things to say, the rebuttals. Um, and that was a really good uh, learning lesson for me because I got to watch an actual buyer negotiate and talk to a seller. And then from there, it, I gained a lot of confidence to be able to communicate with sellers. That's awesome, man. You know, 
one I want to touch on that when you said that you had that person who was just giving you game and you know I've learned that in business you know people who are successful I think that some people think that people who are successful and you know are financially I guess rich or whatever you want to call it that they think they're like stuck up but most of the people that are financially successful it's like I heard the saying like an old tongue likes to wag they'll just tell you everything because like they already 90 percent of them will just give you game because they already did it themselves and you know, I, I like helping people myself. Like, you know, if I could help somebody else, like, as long as they're hungry and they're not just like you're telling your friend and they're just like, all right, man. And they're not going to do anything with it. But if you see a kid who's like 19, he's in your city, he's like, yo, I'm hungry. Just tell me what to do. You know, you, you want to help them. And then um, that's awesome, dude. I, I remember when you did, I know about you, but when I did my first deal, I was just like, wow, like this really is possible. And it's just like, once you know it's possible, I think this, once I did my first wholesale deal, like a month later I did my second deal in the same city like probably a mile and a half down the street and I was just like okay and then it just it just took off from there so that's really cool and that just goes to show that it's possible for people who are watching my videos because a lot of people want to do wholesaling but like he said and my deal took 11 months my first deal took 11 months I got it under contract um in November or no I got the lead in October I started in February and I didn't close until the following January. So, you know, my deal took 11 months. So for people watching, know that even if it takes time, it's going to work. Um, do you have anything as far as like, you know, the craziest moment, like any like crazy roller coaster moment where everything's crashing down and somehow you still close the deal? I think you're on mute by somehow. Oh, no. Oh, Amy? Okay, you're good. Okay. I, I oh, no, I was just actively listening, bro. <laughs> You have any um, crazy moments where it was like everything was crashing down, but you still somehow, you know, came out on top. Cause I know real estate could be up, down, left in circles, stuff like that. Yeah. I'm trying to think, I have two that comes to mind. I'm trying to think which one is, I, can I tell you both? Sure. All right. So my first deal that I ever purchased now. Okay. Let me back up a little bit. Um, I started real estate in when I was 18 right? I started real estate when I was 18. I was very young, immature, um, and did a lot of just dumb stuff, just, just, you know, dumb stuff. So I made a goal to close four deals in a month. I calculated that on average, I was making five grand per deal. I figured if I do four deals in one month, I'll make 20 grand. That was my goal, right? So um, worked hard, accomplished the goal, made 20 grand in a month, and then, you know, like I said, I'm young, dumb, immature. So I'm taking girls out every weekend. I'm going out all the time and um, just doing dumb stuff. And that 20 grand just evaporates. It evaporates, bro. Mind you, you know, I've never had this much money in my, in my, in my life. I made seven, I was making 7,500 every year. So to me, this was, a, this was like millions of dollars to me. You know, this is how I felt. Yeah. Uh, I realized quickly 20 grand ain't shit. That's what I realized very quickly that 20 grand is nothing. Um, not even a hundred grand. So I had a conversation with my mentor at the time, somebody who I really looked up to, another buyer that gives a lot of game that I considered to be a mentor. And and me and him had a heart to heart. And he was like, bro, you got to start buying rental properties. He's like, you, you got, you need to own properties. That is the name of the game in this business. That's how you gain wealth. Wholesaling is great. It gives, it, it gives you a lot, a lot of leverage. You're the first to get the deal. You got it on the contract, but you need to buy properties. That's where wealth comes in. Um, so I said, okay, cool. I made a decision after that conversation that I'm going to figure out how, I don't know how, but I'm going to figure out how to buy properties. Um, started learning about creative financing, just delve deep into that. And every single time I talked to somebody, I would offer them payments over time. I'll say, hey, I can do payments over time or I can do cash. Payments over time, cash. One day somebody said they'll be paying over time. I'm like, great. Still don't know how to do creative financing deals, by the way. Yeah. So I ended up reaching out um, to one of my partners who I know who knows how to do it. And um, I, I, I told him that I'll pay him uh, $2,000 on that deal and um, like type of consultation type fee. And I just want him to just show me how to do it. Just literally, and he literally just did the same thing that the first person did for my first deal, negotiated everything for me. Um, the deal was great, great acquisition, purchase price, everything. Where I messed up was higher um, was um, um, the wrong tenant, getting the wrong tenant. I got me a tenant, this tenant put down uh, money for the deposit. And that was the only money that I have received from that woman since, you know what I mean? She got into that property. 
Yeah. Um, I'm young. I'm impressionable. I'm excited. This is my first rental property. Like I, I feel great. Um, so, you know, and not only that, but I felt like I was helping the community. I felt like I was doing such a good service to this family, beautiful kids. And, um, and, uh, and, and they also like some of their family members, I knew some of them or something like that. So I felt that connection. Um, month goes by, I'm waiting for my, for my rent check. Don't come. Um, I'm calling them. I'm reaching out. You know what I mean? Next month goes by, no, nothing comes. So, you know, um, now it starts to become a thing, uh, me and them going back and forth. Um, I reached out to a few people, um, to a few people. Uh, I tried to evict them. They won the eviction case. They won the eviction case because I didn't know what I was doing. I was doing dumb stuff. I didn't give the right proper notice. It was all types of legality stuff, you know, because we live in Baltimore is a tenant friendly state. It's not a landlord state. So they do everything in their power to help the tenant out um you know for whatever reason right so after i lost my eviction bro i literally was depressed i was depressed i was and and, and the, the money that i put into that property was my retirement account right everything out of my ira and and i did everything wrong I, I i didn't i took the money out took a whole bunch of penalties put it into the into the rehab um and and it was just like you know what all in who cares i'll take the penalties you know what i'm saying because that's the type of personality i have whatever it takes type of type of attitude is my, my attitude right and uh you know a couple months later you know the house is now roach infested um with the tenant inside and all this stuff uh, i'm sitting down with a, yet another person who i looked up to who was a mentor i'm you, you kind of seen a trend i'm i got mentors yeah and sitting down with with somebody who I really respect, he, he owns a bunch of rental properties in Baltimore, one of the biggest landlords. And, and he just told me straight up, he's like, bro, get out of your feelings. He said, it's, an, it's not a matter of if, when you're gonna have a bad property, it's a matter of when. Everybody got a problem, property that they have a problem with. This is the name of the game. You know what I mean? You, you do what you gotta do, sell the property and move on. If you feel like you can't do it, maybe this isn't the business for you, you know? Um, but you have to, you got to have tough skin and you got to get out of this rut. Like right now you're, 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 you're all depressed and sad. And, and you kind of, you kind of like you, you're in this, I felt like I couldn't do nothing. Like I was stuck. Like I meant, you know, I couldn't do anything. He's like, bro, you got to do something, action, take action. Right. And it was very motivating, very inspiring. And from there, you know, he helped me um, get the tenant out, gave me a lot of game. Finally got the tenant out. It was just a huge mess, but I learned a lot. That I like when I tell you, Felix. When I tell you that I know so much about the rental, like how to evict tenants and and what judges favor landlords versus what judges favor tenants, and like it was one of the best educations um, I've ever gotten um, from 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 just this horrible situation. Yeah, uh, did everything right. And, and, and also, you know, um, guys, I, I had, when I bought this property, I had already developed a reputation for myself. I was already known for a guy that knows what he's doing. Um, you know, people was reaching out to me. I wasn't teaching at the time, but people was reaching out to me to ask for mentorships. So I was very embarrassed. I felt like I knew I was supposed to know what I'm doing and I screwed up royally. And, and um, the fact is, is that no, like some of the people that you look up to have made horrible mistakes, rookie mistakes, and they had to go to someone and ask them and vent to them and, and try and ask for help. So, um, you know, don't let your ego get in the way. This is one of the only businesses where you can reach out to somebody like Felix, a brother, a, a possible mentor and have them help you, you know, and if you're like, if you have this like, oh, like I'm embarrassed because I'm supposed to know it all, then you may not reach out for help. And um, so, you know, I definitely, you know, hope that that helped uh, some way. I got another story, but I'll 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 leave that for another time. Yeah, maybe maybe we go too long. We, so you actually ended up keeping the property. Yeah, I had that property still to this day. Um, had to rehab it again and rent it out again. But um, that was my first ever property that I that I kept that I kept as a rental. And uh, it was a subject to deal. And um, yeah, it was, it was, it was, it was horrible. <laughs>
<laughs> now, now, um, that's great. And I don't want, we're not going to make this too long. I got about four or five more questions. So you said you have 12 apartments with everything going on with the pandemic has all your, um, apartments and tenants, have they been paying? Cause I actually have eight myself. Um, I have a two family and a six family rented out and all my tenants have paid. Have you had the same, um, I guess, luck or, you know, good fortune? Yeah, I haven't really had no issues with my tenants. Um, thank God. Um, the only issues, like tenant issues, is like wholesale deals and stuff like that, like other people. Yeah. Um, but none of my own tenants, thank God. Um, I, I think a lot of times it has to do with the people and the type of uh, jobs they have and, you know, situations like that. So, um, you know, if you're buying rental properties, I would just say, you know, you're, you're buying into tenants. It's more so the tenants and less the property. Yeah. Um, and then the type, right type of um, property can, can attract the right type of tenant, if you get what I'm saying. So um, just think about the ten tenant is always, what that's what pays you, the tenant. I got you. Um, I guess for new wholesalers, if you could give them any piece of advice, what would the advice be? Because I get tons of comments. People wanted to know this, that, the third. From somebody who's been doing it for what sounds like a decade, is there if 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 it boiled down to one thing that could point people into the right direction, what would it be? Get used to being on the phone. I think that's the biggest thing. Um, get used to being on the phone. There's going to be a lot of people out there that's going to be like, "Hey, cold calling is dead," and all this stuff. You know, there's always ways, to, multiple ways to get leads and get leads coming into you. But I, I can't think of any situation where you won't be on the phone as an investor. And I think a lot of times people are scared to be on the phone. Like if somebody's on the other end, it's going to hurt you or punch you or something. Um, it, it can, can just remind yourself that whoever's on the other end of the phone won't hurt you. And, you know, um, if you have the right type of clauses in your contract, you have outs, you're not risking any money, um, you know, and if you are using the right, the wrong contracts, so just get the right contracts. There is no risk. You know, I, I don't really see much of a risk. Um, even like my thing is I'm Jamaican, right? I'm Jamaican. And I lived there for four years, came back here when I was 11, 12. I've seen poverty. I've seen um, certain things. We live in a, if you're in America, um, we live in a land of opportunity. Uh, if you was to mess up everything tomorrow with a business, and even if you invest your money, you can file bankruptcy. You can do, there's so many like, like programs out there that are there to help and assist you that they don't have anywhere else. Um, so I, I, I just say, keep swinging, man. Just keep swinging, keep making calls, make offers, stay active. Um, and just don't be scared. Just do not be scared because there's no reason to be. Yeah, there's like, there's so many safety nets. I feel like in America, even if you lose everything, I'm from America, I can't really speak on another country, but I feel like, you know, swing for the fences because the worst that could happen is, you know, you, you strike out, you can get back up and you could try to hit the ball again. Um, but yeah, I, I definitely agree. A phone, I don't care what business you're in, you have to learn how to be able to be able to talk to people, build relationships and, you know, sell and do all types of things, which could take time, but as long as you're not scared, and even if you are scared, if you're at least willing to do it, that, you know, means a lot. Kind of a follow-up question. Um, what would you say your strongest skill set is? And then what do you think is um, a skill set you must learn to be successful in real estate? I think consistency. Um, I'm going I'm to say two things. Consistency, for sure, is, my. I think, my strongest skill set. Um, I just keep going. I don't stop. You know, um, even when I have bad days, I continuously go and, and, and talk to people. And even if I, like I may have bad days where I don't do anything, but the next day I continue to do it. Um, I think people give up too easily, bro. People give up way too fast. And my thing about this, but here's my thing about this business. If you're broke, bro, you don't have people be sitting here. They'll get into this business. They spend a week or two in this business and then they, they give up because they haven't closed the deal yet. And they're broke that's what i don't like you're putting yourself in a position to possibly make 10 20 grand and you ain't investing in anything you haven't risked any money and and the only thing that is frustrating you is that you haven't done one yet because yeah. some people said no you know what i'm saying what were you doing before like is it really hurting you are you risking any money have you died i don't that's that's my thing just stay consistent be con be consistent and if you know that this business I, 
to me, I just, I just feel like this is one of those businesses where you should continuously try and try and try, like just keep trying. And, and, and it, and in one deal could be, could be a hundred grand. You never know. Yeah. You never know. Um, the next, the next, uh, cause I said, I'm gonna do two parts. Um, I think, you know, the biggest skill is really just knowing how to talk to people. Like we talked, like we said before, I think that's really the biggest skill. Um, sales, like, you know, being on the phone, um, I look at being on the phone like a sport. Like how does, how is, why is LeBron, why is LeBron James, LeBron James? Why is um, Steph Curry, Steph Curry? Because Steph Curry takes so many shots and have been taking shots and shots and shots and shots and shots that he has perfected this shot. So you're gonna, you're gonna, you gotta practice how to cold call. And the only way to practice how to cold call is practice by doing. You know what I mean? You gotta make an offer. You got to make a, you can't do, you cannot close a deal if you don't make an offer and people, and it's just fair, fair. People are scared to make an offer. They're scared to get on the phone. They're scared to talk to people, learn how to sell, learn how to negotiate. Those are the two skills that, that you learn in this business. Um, you don't, you're not, there's no product. Yeah. There's like really no product. It's really just you, you are the product, you know, and I don't want to ramble, bro. Cause you obviously know I'm about no. this. <laughs> To be honest, dude, I didn't even, like, I knew you were a smart guy. I knew you were very savvy, but bringing you on here and us just going back and forth, having some notes on the side to go off, I really appreciate it, man. And maybe we'll do a follow-up. But like you said, one to two weeks, like, I mean, I'm sure there's people out there who started wholesaling today and what, it's the end of the month. By May 15th, they're closing the deal. But it's super rare. And if you have nothing, like you can't go backwards. Like you're going to go backwards and go back to making seven bucks an hour, or you could potentially go forward and say what it's April by October, you could be going to the bank with a $20,000 check. Or even if it takes a year, now you have a skill, like a 10, you just made what you made in, like you were saying, making 7,500 for the whole year. So I think what you, with the value, you know, and you know, the skill sets and the experiences you have, could really benefit somebody really looking to learn about wholesaling. I know you have like a mastermind and we'll wrap it up with here. I guess tell everybody one, how they can get in contact with you. And for anybody who watches this video or is a part of my viewership, how could they either work or learn from you? Yeah, sure, sure. So, I mean, I definitely teach and I have a mastermind and it's just really me giving back, you know, um, as well as me find ways to do deals with multiple people, as much people as possible. And I don't like to hit people over the head with a, pri with a, with a huge price. My mastermind is $27 a month. Um, that's just to, you know, make sure that uh, we keep the lights on with, the, with that and that I have like, you know, gaining value um, for my time, having some type of um, paid time, right? Once we do the one-on-ones, you have to be a part of the mastermind to get one-on-ones. And we, we go over whatever it is that you want to do. And I guarantee you that if in my one hour, I guarantee you I can out teach most me most mentors out there in the real estate game yeah. um, and charge you five grand for six months, you know? So that's just, you know, my perspective when it comes to the mastermind. You can go to realestateinvestingscoop.com. We got a lot of people in there that's closing a lot of deals. Um, and you can find um, testimonials about that as well. Um, you can go to my Instagram at Colson 90 I used that back in the meme days and I just kept it. I just liked Colson. It makes me feel like Bond, like James Bond or something. Uh -huh. I, and then YouTube, YouTube, just Eddie Colson, just Eddie Colson. And I, I go on there and talk a lot about different um, tactics from wholesaling to creative financing. So yeah, reach out. I'm very approachable and I will respond to you. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining me on the channel. Again, if you guys want to get involved with wholesaling and learn from somebody who really does it, not just saying they do it, but is actually in the field doing it from the day to day, go check out his information. I will put them down in the description below. Again, thank you, Eddie, for joining me on the channel and we will see you guys in the next video. Peace. Peace.